Hi Year 4, I'm actually in the library today recording your story. So let's start where we left off. The bright! Sniff cried in pain as Lucy flicked on the torch and shone it down through the bars of the basket, trying to see these creakers up close. Turns the bright off, you worried little kidderling! It be too hot! Grunt cried, cowering away from the torchlight. Lucy suddenly caught a whiff of something horrid. It smelled like burning hair, all smoky and dry. She realised that the creakers didn't just dislike the torchlight, it was hurting them, burning them. Oh, I'm so sorry, Lucy said, switching off the torch right away. These creatures were awfully disgusting, but she didn't want to hurt them. No creature deserved that. Plus, the smell of their burning flesh was horrendous. Yes, that's a nice kiddling, gasped Guff, dabbing at his smouldering skin. Now just be lifting up this trapper, and we'll be on our ways, leaving you and your friends alone, yes? He added, peering up at Lucy with his black eyeballs. Ella, Norman, Lucy said, suddenly remembering her friends. Gently, she prodded Ella, who was lying next to the basket. Ella, it's me, Lucy, can you hear me? But Ella didn't open her eyes. She was snoring happily in a blissful snooze. Oh, I wouldn't be trying to wake up a dozer, said Sniff helpfully. Not good to wake someone who's had the dust. Makes them all messy in the noggin. Messy in the noggin? Had the dust? Lucy asked, confused. Yes, kidderlings go right out with a bit of dozy dust, leaving it all nice and easy peasy for us to creak about. Oh! groaned Sniff as Grunt elbowed him in his round belly. Quiet, bog brain, you be telling the human too much! Grunt snapped. No, don't stop, said Lucy. That's why I've trapped you. I want answers and you're not going anywhere until I get them. The creakers went silent and Lucy sensed them all looking at each other inside the basket beneath her feet. We not be telling the kidderling a thing, she heard Grunt hiss firmly to the others. More loudly, he added, We be waiting for more creakers to come free us. Then you be in a whole heap of troubles. <laughs> whispered Scratch threateningly, with a sly smile in his voice. "'What other creakers?' said Guff curiously, rubbing his cannonball tummy. "'Why didn't no else, anyone else be coming here tonight?' "'Shut your mud hole, you mush-minded moron!' Grump barked. "'All oh, right, sorry, yet yeah, them others,' Guff quickly said, trying to play along, but Lucy knew now that no one else was coming. Suddenly she had an idea. There was a way she could look at the creakers, her bedroom mirror. She quickly whipped round to face the wall where her full-length mirror was hanging, positioned perfectly to reflect those wicked creatures underneath. There you are, she smiled and put her hands on her hips. Hello, waved Snipsh chirpily, before being elbowed in the nose by Scratch. Now I want you to tell me exactly what you've done with the grown-ups, Lucy said. No! huffed Grunt firmly, staring back at her in the mirror. I want to know why you took them, Lucy calmly explained. Not so chance. There you go, there's the picture. I want to know I want to know why you creak around our bedrooms at night. Can't tell the kiddler our secrets. And I want you to tell me how I can get the grown ups back, said Lucy. Where 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 wailed Grunt, which Lucy remembered was the creaker way of laughing. Get the grown-ups back. Wah, wah, that'd be impossible, you silly kiddler. Lucy's stomach twisted at the word impossible. I'm not silly. Nothing's impossible, she said. Impossible isn't real. It's just in your mind. If you tell me where the grown-ups are, I'll march down into the Waleb and get them myself, and things can all go back to the way they were before. Oh, I'm afraid you can't be doing that said Gruff, sounding a little more serious than he had so far. You see, Kiddling, your grown-ups aren't quite the same as you remember them. The creakers started giggling, which sounded more like the way you gargle when you brush your teeth. What? What? What do you mean? Lucy stared, starting to get a little panicked. What have you done to them? We? said Scratch. Not we. Not us little creakers. Not Grunt, Guff, Scratch and Sniff. We be good little creakers. We're not hurting your grown-ups, jumped in Sniff. Then who? asked Lucy, her mind racing to work out this riddle. It be the wallop, said Grunt darkly. 
the Woleb doing what the Woleb does. What does the Woleb do? asked Lucy. The Creakers looked at each other with wicked smiles. The Woleb be changing them, said Grant. The Woleb be twisting them, said Guff. The Woleb be keeping them, added Scratch. Forever, whispered Sniff. Chapter 13. Hang on. Isn't 13 an unlucky, unlucky number? Feels a little bit reckless to be writing a book about creepy creatures that live under your bed and then just whack in an unlucky chapter number like it's no big deal. What if you read this chapter and then a creaker snatched you? I'd feel so guilty. Should we skip straight to chapter 14? I think it's probably wise. You never can be too careful where creakers are concerned. Chapter 14. Human Spells Lucy couldn't hold it together any longer. She'd been staying strong ever since the day it all began. She'd already lost her dad. Now, hearing these creatures say that she might never get her mum back too was just too much. So Lucy did the only thing a person can do when there's nothing more a person can do. She had a good old cry. She howled and wailed, sitting on top of the washing basket with the four hideous creakers trapped underneath, listening to her sobs. The tears started filling up the insides of her swimming goggles, but she didn't dare take them off. She definitely didn't trust the creakers. "'What's the kid who doing?' said Scratch. "'What a rotten noise!' said Sniff, plugging his floppy ears with his long fingers. "'I'm crying, you horrid things!' Lucy sobbed. "'Crying?' What is crying? Sniff asked. And out of the corner of her teary eyes, Lucy could see all four creakers peering up at her through the bars of the washing basket. Haven't you anyone seen anyone cry before? <laughs> Lucy sniffed. No, the creakers said together. We be creaking when we when kigger, kidders are a snoozing. We never seen a crying human before, explained Grunt. Lucy wiped away the tears that trickled down her cheeks and sniffed up a sob. Well, crying is what you do when you're really, really sad about something, she said. Crying is bad? Guff asked eagerly. Us creakers usually be light in the bad stuff. Actually, my dad used to say that crying is a good thing. It's when all the sad stuff inside your mind builds up so much that it starts to leak out of your eyes. It's good to let it out said Lucy. The creakers went quiet beneath her, like they were really thinking about what she just said. Sometimes I think I might have too much bad stuff inside my noggin. Oh, sorry. Sometimes I think I might have too much bad stuff inside my noggin, admitted Scratch, peeling a bit of skin from his itchy scalp and popping it in his mouth. Ugh. Every night it's creaking here and creaking there, snatching grown-ups one day, dozy and kids the next. His voice started to sound rather strange, almost like he was trying not to laugh. I knows what you mean, said Sniff, who started giggling a little. All we be doing is the nasties night in and night out, agreed Guff. And with that, the three of them cracked up in fits of laughter. Lucy stared down at them. What horrible creatures, she thought, laughing at someone who's upset. But then she remembered that these creakers were from a backwards world, and that... When they laughed, it actually sounded like crying. So did this mean that now they were laughing, they were actually upset? It was all very confusing and rather odd. Pull yourselves together, you twazzles, hissed Grunt. The kiddling be putting you under kiddling spells, making you all human and wash-brained. Naughty human magic. He glared up at Lucy through the bars of the washing basket. I'm not putting them under spells, protested Lucy. I don't know any spells at all. Humans can't do magic. I just told you a story, that's all. Exactly. Stories are magic. They put ideas in your noggin that weren't in there before. They make you think all different about the world, barked Grunt grumpily, and the other creakers snapped out of Lucy's story spell and came back to their rotten senses. All of a sudden, something seemed to happen that made the creakers shift awkwardly. Their wrinkly ears pricked up like a cat hearing... A mouse squeak. Then Lucy heard the church bell chime in the distance. What time was it? Lucy started counting. It's getting early, Grunt said. The dark need be nearly over, said Guff. Let's be going back to the... Began scra Scratch. Wallab! Finished Sniff. Nope, Lucy said, tightening the straps of her goggles. 
She sniffed, she shifted around until she was comfortable on top of the basket and stared straight at them in the mirror. You're not going anywhere until you tell me what I want to know. Why are you here and what have you done with our grown-ups? The church bell stopped. It was five o'clock, almost morning. Tell her, Grunt, it's the only ways, said Guff. We be dust if she don't let us be going back. Dust? Lucy asked. But the creakers pressed their ugly lips together tightly and she could see they weren't going to say any more. She tried again. Tell me everything or you're staying here. Right, we're going to have to stop there for today. I hope you've had a wonderful day and have a wonderful day tomorrow. And um, stay safe and have fun. Bye-bye.